All right, welcome back everybody. So now I finally have my PCBs in. Um, I did make a couple of minor changes to them. Nothing to the schematic, but just a minor change to some footprints and positioning. And I was able to shrink the board down a little bit more, but here we have one of our fabricated PCBs. And this is the switch that we're going to be using. And the switch, the lugs just go right into our um, our solder pads like that and um, so if you want to compare that to a standard 3PDT on off switch it's a little bit bigger for sure um, but that is taking into account you know the fact that we have all of these solder pads up here that are you know would usually be done by the lugs here um, but it gives us more capabilities there now with this PCB the way that you'll put them together is start with the smallest parts that's going to be um, the diode and the transistor and the um, and the voltage regulator there and then put in the passive components then put in um, you know your relay and the microcontroller and then finally solder on the switch now the thing about this assembly is that before you get going hog wild, you need to figure out which way you want to do your programming of your microcontroller. So here's our microcontroller. If you want to compare that to a standard uh, DIP8 IC, it is significantly smaller. And so the reason why we need to consider how we want to deal with our microcontroller is because there's really there's three different ways we can program a surface mount microcontroller like this we can um, program it in place or we can program it with uh, with a special socket now when you program it in place you can either program it in place with clips which I will show later or if we had designed our board in such a way you could also put header pins on the board for programming and for uh, boards that use really really small chips so even smaller than this frequently there will be some kind of a header that they use for programming in place but because we're using an SOIC package which is small but it's not unworkably small we can actually use a socket like this so this is a a surface mount to through hole pin socket and the way it works is you just push down the outside of the socket you put your pin in there or you put your part in there and then these little pins come over the top and they clamp down on the legs and the legs are just attached straight through into these through hole pins and I'll show how to program using this in just a little bit so when if you're going to do one of these and when you get your boards before you just go and solder your your chip on decide whether or not you want to program it in place or whether or not you want to use something like one of these sockets I got this socket on Ally Express for a couple of dollars and it works really well um, and it 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 works with my programming board um, which I will be showing you here in just a little bit and so that's kind of my preferred way of doing it it makes it a little easier to troubleshoot um, any kind of like programming issues or what have you alright so here we are at the computer I've got my Arduino IDE pulled up here and this has our relay bypass module sketch or code pulled up um, this is the actual code that I put onto one of my test units so I know that it works but we're just going to go through really quickly the process of programming to an ATtiny85 um, using this Arduino IDE so the first thing to know is that I've got a programming board here this is my own design of a programming board um, and I believe that it is up on my github where you can get the Gerbers for it for free and what's going on is that we are using an Arduino Nano as a programmer for these AT tiny chips the rest of the circuit is actually really really easy it is connections of various sorts to connect to the chip and one capacitor and I have this 
uh, zero insertion force socket here for um, dealing with the chips and <laughs> I accidentally unplugged it. So there we are. Um, so in our Arduino IDE, what we need to do is first we need to actually program this Nano so that it will actually function as a programmer. And that is done using um, in, under examples Arduino ISP and you come and you open this sketch here which for me opened up off the screen but we'll bring it up here and this is an example sketch that all you have to do is just program it so you will set up under tools you'll set up your board so that it's actually set up for the Arduino Nano the same way we did it in one of the earlier videos and you'll just send that you'll just program that to your Arduino Nano I don't need to do that because I've already done it so I'm going to go ahead and close this but then we want to tell our Arduino IDE that we're actually going to be programming an ATtiny85 so under tools we'll go to board and we'll go to this ATtiny core or no sorry ATtiny microcontrollers um, you may so this does not come installed by default um, but it is if you go to manage libraries you can download it from there you'll search for ATtiny and so what we'll do is we'll say we're using an ATtiny microcontroller of the family 254585 and so we'll select that and then we select the actual chip that we're using we're using the ATtiny85 we need to do this because each different part has a different digital signature that it's going to check for and then we can tell we can tell the part how fast we want it to run um, it has these internal clocks and you can also tell it that you're using an external clock because we don't have an external um, oscillator we're not going to use any of these external ones I like to use the internal 8 megahertz because it runs a lot faster than the 1 megahertz but the 16 megahertz requires some extra configuration that I don't <laughs> that I don't want to bother with so we'll use the 8 megahertz it'll be more than fast enough for anything that we'll do with this project and then we tell it what um, what serial port we're using that's what serial port our Arduino is actually connected to and then we need to tell it under the programmer earlier when we were programming just the Nano we were using AVR ISP Mark II but now we're telling it we want to actually use an Arduino as our ISP which is our programmer okay once we have that all set up we connect our chip now as I mentioned there are a few different ways that we can actually program this part so here is my socket my my little microcontrollers in there and on my board here I actually have it so that these top eight pins four on each side are for an ATtiny 85 25 45 85 that family and pin one goes up here in the top left and all I have to do is take the pins of my socket put them in there and put the lever push down the lever so that it makes electrical contact and it locks it in there and then what we want to do is we burn the bootloader now this chip we're not actually going to put a bootloader on it but when we are in the Arduino IDE and we tell it that we want to burn a bootloader onto one of these AT tinies it's actually setting the fuses for the clock primarily there are some other settings that it can set but primarily what we're interested in is taking these clock settings and setting those registers in the microcontroller correctly if we don't do that then for example if we say that we want to run this at 8 megahertz the default is 1 megahertz so everything will run 8 times slower than we think it should and so performance can be really kind of weird um, I've I've had cases where I've accidentally done that and um, in for a relay bypass it's not the biggest deal but for other effects or other functionality it can really be a big problem especially if you're trying to do things like 
anything that's timing critical like an LFO or a PWM or something like that. So we click on burn bootloader. You see down here that it's saying burning bootloader to IO board and now it's done burning bootloader. So it has set those registers correctly in our chip. Now we walked through all the whys and hows of our code earlier so I'm not going to go back through that. Rather, now that we have our our sketch that's all done, we can just go and program this to our part. You will uh, see, when it starts programming, you'll see some lights on the Arduino Nano flashing, and that's indicating that there's data transfer and it's checking the data and everything. And then down here it says done uploading. So we are using 998 bytes of our, um, of our eight kilobytes that our 85 has. And we're using 18 bytes out of our 512 dynamic memory bytes. So we are really not using very much on this at all. In fact, a lot of people will choose to use an even more stripped down microcontroller for this. I like using the ATtiny85 because I use it for way more than just relay bypass. And so I will use it for LFOs, PWMs, um, other kinds of control applications. And I don't, uh, I like not having to worry about which I'm going to choose. If I need more pins, there's a bigger one that I'll use, and I just stick mostly to those two microcontrollers the entire time. So that's how we program using a socket. When you're done programming it, you can just turn the socket upside down and press the uh, press the sides of it and the chip will pop out and now you're ready to go solder that on to your board. But you don't have to do it that way. You can program a chip that has already been soldered down and that's really handy if there is a bug in your code or if you didn't configure something right the first time, which actually happened to me. So here is one of my built up modules. I've got <laughs> I've got the LED coming out the wrong side and I've got these two leads coming off just to make it easy to hook up to my bench power supply so that I can um, check the performance of everything. But what, I, what I'm doing if I want to program in place is I use this clip and this clip has eight pins on it. It has one wire that is a different color than the rest and so that's pin one. And so you just line up the pins with the chip so that pin one is on pin one and all the other pins are on, are on their respective pin on the chip. And once it's connected like that, then you can just go ahead and program the microcontroller the same way as we did it uh, with the other one. Okay, easy peasy, no big deal there. Now, if your board were to have header pins on here, for programming in place, then um, you might not use a clip, but you could use something like just these raw headers right here and some and some uh, jumper wire to connect the appropriate pins on this header to the header pins on your board, and that will allow you to program in place. Um, my board is also made to program larger chips, which is what uh, which is what this connector here and this socket here are for, um, as well as the remaining pins of my ZIF socket here. But it's a really basic board. Um, the schematic is dead simple. It's really just connecting a bunch of wires so that you don't have a whole bunch of wires flying everywhere, which I did for a little while and it gets really old really fast. So there we have programmed our microcontroller and now that we've got a fully built up and programmed uh, bypass module. Let's take this back over to the bench and let's test it out. All right, so here we are back at the bench and I've got my finished module just clamped into my little helping hands here and I've got my power and my ground connected. And I don't have any actual signals connected, but the reason for that is because this LED is sharing the same power as the relay. So when the LED goes on, the relay is also being activated. Um, so the, the LED is kind of the visual indicator that this is all working correctly. So I'm just going to 
press the button some and we'll see that when I press it, it turns on and off just the way that we would expect it to. Okay. And when it's off, if I press and hold for more than half a second, it'll turn off when I release the button. So that is our momentary engage for an effect. So toggle the effect on, off, momentary on, and then it turns off as soon as we're done releasing. That's really great for effects that you just want to throw in a little bit of color, especially if it's like a wild effect or a really heavy effect like a super strong delay or something. But there we go. That is our relay bypass circuit. So we've gone all the way through the theory of how it works, the basics of how the code works, and then we've developed an actual real life module that is relatively compact and that um, is, it's not terribly expensive. The relay, I think, was, you know, the relay is on the order of a dollar. The microcontroller is on the order of a dollar. The switch is about $2, um, and then, you know, we have the various miscellaneous components. So for about $5 probably, we have this relay bypass module that not only is a nice soft toggle for turning an effect on or off, but we also get the momentary bypass functionality out of it. Now, while that's pretty cool, we can start doing things in addition to this if we were to have the microcontroller connected to a wider circuit, we could do things like double taps. We could do things like triple taps, or we could have different functions that happen if we press two buttons at the same time. This relay bypass module is really kind of the simplest thing we can do. And the whole purpose of doing this was to give us a real world example of how we can use this microcontroller to accomplish something, but it is just scratching the surface. There are so many more things we can do with our microcontrollers as we monitor the voltages on other pins to control the outputs on yet other pins. So this hopefully gets your feet wet a little bit. Hopefully you enjoyed going along uh, with me on this project and we will try and get some other more advanced microcontroller based stuff put together and post it up soon. So if you're not subscribed yet, I encourage you to do so, so you'll be notified when the next video comes. And until then, thanks for watching. Take care.